how I get ready for a video. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's start the video. For most of us, driving for Lyft and Uber is a transitional job. We love it, I love it, but I don't want to do it forever. So when you're thinking about what else to do, a lot of times you can find a lot of inspiration from what other people have done. In this video, I'm going to share with you the very inspirational story of Fernando from Brazil. And stick around because at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you what makes the town of Padazuru famous. Hey everybody, it is Jay Crater with The Rideshare Guy coming to you again from <laughs> Bangkok, Thailand. I'm so happy to uh, be recording this here uh, from my condo in Bangkok. So let's start at the beginning. Number one, meeting Fernando. So it was 4.45 in the morning. I had taken my shower, I gotten all dressed, I put the gas in my car, I went to my Starbucks, I ordered my vanilla sweet cream cold brew tall in my personal cup, and boom, as I was waiting for my drink, this man walked up to me, he said, hey, are you Jay? And I said, yes, I am. I reached out my hand and that's how I met Fernando. And Fernando told me that there are a ton of people from Brazil who are driving for Uber and Lyft in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I invited him to come on to my uh, podcast, uh, which, which he did. Uh, but he also told me about his plan B, and that's what we're going to talk about now. Two, Fernando's background in hospitality. So uh, Fernando used to work for a company, and they had a bed and breakfast in Bar Harbor, Maine. And that's when he got the idea of creating an Airbnb in, in Brazil, uh, where he came from, which is his home. So he worked for uh, that company. Then he went into the culinary arts. He, he studied for a year and he became a chef and he worked for several different companies. But he soon came to realize that he was pretty uh, restricted. He didn't have the freedom to pursue his plan B and he wasn't making enough money. That's when he started to think about uh, rideshare driving. He was living in Florida. He started to uh, follow the rideshare guy. Apparently he watched a lot of my videos in San Francisco about how to drive the streets of San Francisco. He hightailed it to San Francisco and he started driving for Uber, for Lyft, for Zoom. Number three, a rocky start. So Fernando told me when I interviewed him for the podcast that uh, when he got his, he, he applied to Uber and he applied to Lyft. Uh, Uber took a long time. Lyft was only three days, so that was his, the first uh, rides he did. And uh, he got the first ping, and he was so nervous, he kind of had a little panic attack, that he just <laughs> declined it, didn't take it. You see, um, having English be your second language uh, can make it difficult. San Francisco is very fast-paced. Everyone's talking fast, you know, fast English. So he's a little, little fearful about, you know, could he relate to the, the, the passengers? But second ping, he took it. Uh, he went to the airport. Uh, from the airport, he then got a ride all the way down to Palo Alto, which is about 30 to 40 minutes south. Then he got a ride from there back to the airport. Before he knew it, his first three rides, he had over $100 in earnings, and he was on his way. Number four, Fernando's plan B is to create an Airbnb on the coast of Brazil. And it's in the town of Parajuru, and what I was going to share with you is Parajuru is a mecca for kite surfing. So if you want to be a kite surfer, man, that's the place to go. And uh, it's beautiful. And as you can see in this picture, it's just water and beach and, and absolutely amazing. So that's been what he's been working on for the last three years is putting together this building. Actually, you know, managing the building of this building. It's six units and he's scheduled to have it open in about six months uh, in the summer of 2020. Pretty inspiring. I'm inspired. So number five, I asked Fernando, what are the biggest challenges? You know, it's a big job, uh, you know, having, having to, you know, send your money down there and manage people from a distance. Uh, what are the biggest challenges? And he said the biggest challenge was just, you know, managing everything. He shared with me that he has a son uh, who's 23 who wants to go to medical school. He's currently studying for the MCAT, so he needs some money. And of course, Fernando needs money to live. 
and then he needs to send money down there and he's got to make sure everybody's doing their job so everything's getting done on time. So there's kind of this juggling and that's the biggest challenge. And I would say that's a pretty common uh, challenge for most of us who are, you know, want to do something extra, something special uh, in our lives, something that's going to bring us great joy and satisfaction is, you know, uh, you got to you got to start doing a lot of different things to make it happen. And it, it can be difficult because life, you know, has a lot of different pressures and stressors and uh, things that you're uh, required to do, commitments that you have. So juggling it all can be a challenge. So key takeaways. You can't stop a man who's got a dream. And that's really so fundamentally, vitally important to anyone who's got a plan B. It's gotta be like a dream, a vision, a goal, so strong, so powerfully living inside of you that you have to do it and nothing is going to stop you. Not that English is your second language, that's not gonna stop you. Not that you have a son who wants to go to medical school, that's not gonna stop you. Not that you're building something that's on a whole nother continent, that's not gonna stop you. None of this is stopping Fernando and that's why I think it's so amazing what he's doing and it's inspiring and I hope you're inspired and fired up to sit down and think about what do you really wanna do in your life that will just you know get you waking up full of excitement and, and uh, focus and, and like a mission, like a man or a woman on a mission. And then once you got that, man, that you got that fire, then you just got to start making a plan and taking action. And that's what Fernando did. And he's a great example of a, of a driver uh, who's created a life beyond rideshare driving. So I want to thank Fernando for his time, for sharing his story. Uh, it was absolutely great. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, subscribe. We bring out three to four different uh, videos every single week all about the rideshare industry and things we can do to make you more money in less time and to think about what's next after Uber and Lyft. This is Jay Crater with the Rideshare Guys saying thanks for watching. You go out and have a great day. Be safe out there.